From Virginia Beach, Virginia, USA, welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, what power do you need to produce to win a mountain stage of this year's Tour de France? We'll be taking a deep dive into some of the numbers that will make you all wince. Will. We've also got an update on Lachlan Morton's out Tour de France, which has had its ups and downs, literally and figuratively, plus the return of Extreme Corner Whoa. later on in the show. <laughs> Last week in the world of cycling, we learned that cycling fans should keep their eyes on the road. This week, we learned that cyclists would also be best served keeping their eyes on the road. He just rode off the road. Whoa. Ooh, Brandon McNulty there, taking a close look at the uh, alpine foliage. Uh, I did feel quite bad for him, I must admit. Having I mean, done such an amazing job for Pogaccia, he must have felt like a bit of a twit. With <laughs> him, <laughs> really. Yeah, well, thankfully, it didn't result in any major injuries. I think no. it was his pride that was far more hurt with that one, and he finished the stage. We also learned this week that... Are you thinking Don't about say that? the name. Eddie Merckx. Yes, Eddie Merckx's record is definitely under threat. With this second stage win of the race, Mark Cavendish took his tally of Tour de France stage wins to 32. That's just too shy of Merckx. Eddie Merckx. And finally, we learned that having watched last week's GCN show, the entire Tour de France peloton were motivated to prove that it is actually really hard. And we ended up witnessing perhaps the toughest opening week in living memory, both in terms of terrifying racing, brutal crashes, and relentlessly fast speed. So much so, in fact, that it's actually made Lachlan Morton's epic out tour look like quite a pleasant alternative, <laughs> doesn't it really? And you know, bear in mind, it's five and a half thousand kilometers on his own in 23 days. But yes, please, I'd take that over another day in the bunch at the Tour de France. I would as well, I think. Uh, more from Lachlan later, but we're going to stick with the conventional Tour de France for a moment longer. Now, we said the speeds have been relentlessly fast, and it really does seem like more than ever, we've seen proper full gas racing on every single one of those stages, including on the 250k stage that came on Friday. The rides went 20 minutes faster than even the fastest estimate from the Tour de France organizers. Yep, an average speed of 45.5k an hour for over five and a half hours. However, it's always the climbing speeds, I think, are the most eye-watering. On Saturday, Tadej Pogacar did something I personally don't think I've ever witnessed in 30 years of watching the Tour de France. It was almost Merckxian in its ambition and its execution, wasn't it? Eddie Merckx. Yep. Yeah, Eddie in 30 Merckx. mountainous kilometres, he put three minutes and 20 seconds into his biggest rivals for the yellow jersey, and he did that solo. And mainly on the big ring yes. as well. Uh, unfortunately, the far he uploaded Strava didn't include his power, but it is definitely worth looking at nonetheless. He took the KOM on the Col de Rom with a VAM, so that's how many metres of altitude uh, in an hour, of 1762, which is bonkers, and he missed the Col de Colombier by one second, but still with a VAM of over 1700. And bear in mind, he'd been on his own for ages by that point, hadn't mm. he? Of course, stravering your Tour de France is quite a recent trend. Started by Daniel Lloyd, uh, probably the 2009 Strada Bianca. Wasn't it, it was, it? yes. I didn't have a GPS device at the 2010 tour, but I wish you wouldn't keep mentioning that, Si, honestly. Uh, fortunately, though, Amati Puraili on his Twitter feed had some historical times on there as well, even from before 2009. Yeah, so he went faster than the 2009 tour, which had Contador Schleck Armstrong et al. And it was only just 2018 that was fractionally faster, with Dan Martin leading the way. But... Apparently, Pogaccio had a massive headwind on the climb this year. Um, so estimates of his power are about 6.3 watts per kilo, or a casual 415 watts. Now, sadly, as we said, we are relying on estimates for Pogaccio at the moment, but the mighty impressive Ben O'Connor included his stage-winning power file, and oh my! Read it and weep. Or indeed, watch it and weep. An average power of 313 watts for the entire 4 hours, 37 minutes and 32 seconds that it took him to complete the stage. Impressive in itself, particularly given the amount of descending on the course. But Stephen Seeler has produced a very handy infographic from that file to help us break it down more. He has, with colours to make it even clearer. Yeah. So in the blue, 
you can see the effort he needed to make it into the early breakaway on the first climb of the stage. 405 watts for almost 22 minutes. On the second climb, which is in green, the colder says, he held 380 watts average for over half an hour. And it was slightly less than that, 364 watts, but for a longer duration of 42 minutes on the third climb. But it's the climb to the finish in teen that I would say really stands out. Yeah, and not just because it's in a nice light yellow colour, excellent highlighting, um, but an hour and 12 minutes, an average power of 345 watts. Massive numbers, but bear in mind, he's just 67 kilos, which is actually a number that both you and I can trump him on, yes. can't we? we can do more than that though. We can trump him on age as well, Si, can't we? Yeah, oh, yeah, brilliant. Uh, anyway, O'Connor not only got the stage win that day by over five minutes, but it also moved him up 11 places on GC to second, just over two minutes behind Tadej Pugacha. But is the race already over, Dan? Far from it, Si. <laughs> Plenty to fight for in the green jersey and the polka dots. And there are 11 stage wins up for grabs as well, aren't there? I can't imagine Pogacar's going to win more than half of those 11 stages. Nope, Cav will get the rest, won't he? Uh, right, let's move on to another rider who is winning at the Tour de France, Lachlan Morton. Uh, now 10 days in to the Out Tour and he's already at the halfway mark. So he's got an even bigger lead than Tade Pogacar, hasn't he? 600 kilometres worth of lead, in fact. He's just ridden Mont Ventoux. He has. We joked earlier about how it looks really quite pleasant next to the race itself, but I think it's more testament to Lachlan's character that it does seem to be fun from the outside. Uh, when you look at what he's been doing and putting up with, it's so hardcore. Yeah. He's just lacking someone ordinary to attempt the same feat and kind of put it into some sort of perspective, I would say. Yes, now I worried actually, Dan, that it might all come unstuck because we heard early on that he'd got a sore knee, which is bad news. But rather than call it quits, he bought some flat pedals and rode in sandals. Instead, yeah, uh, averaging 29k an hour for 317 kilometres and over 4,000 metres of climbing, plus carrying all his gear and wet gear at that. He is now able to wear cycling shoes again, by the way, but that's an impressive save, isn't it? Was, it was, yeah. And now last week, we marvelled at him being able to carry off a bum bag. This week, though, having spotted something in the footage that EF and Raf have kindly supplied, Dan, I think we might need to revisit it. Look at this. Hmm. hmm. Are we sure he's cool enough for a bum bag? Bearing in mind that sandals are just out of shot in that photo. Well, it is a good point, Dan. I'm pretty sure you would look like that. Um, in fact, I did try and bring you a bum bag to see what you would look like, but unfortunately, to prove I couldn't how buy cool one. I would look. Yeah. Uh, also, last week you said that he looked a bit like Alice Cooper. Which there were a does. few comments saying, "What about a young Bob Dylan?" Uh, that definitely seems a better fit in my it mind. It does actually. Yeah. Luckily, he wasn't blowing in the wind up Mont Ventoux, Dan. Ah, see what you did there? Yeah. Where he was almost knocking on heaven's door. Yeah, right? he was, yeah. I mean, banter like this, we're both definitely cool enough for a bum bag, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Uh, on a far yeah. more serious note, though, do remember that Lachlan's epic out tour is being ridden in aid of World Bicycle Relief, so we'll put a link in the description if you feel able to support that. Yeah, it is a charity close to our hearts, isn't it? I mean, Dan, you almost tackled an out tour of your own, yeah. didn't you, the other year? Um, but you ended up going one better and shaving your head. I'm always instead. going one step further. That yeah. was painful, I can tell you. Yes, for all of us watching. <laughs> and for the next three months, yeah. whilst it grew back. Well, I kept shaving it, for some reason. Time for GCN inspiration now. Three photos or videos, and there is a video this week, uh, that make you want to go out on your bike. Uh, three prize on offer, and somebody pointed out to us last week, after saying that there aren't many yellow GCN water bottles left, that there's one right behind us. And so, third prize this week will get themselves a GCN limited edition yellow The GCN limited edition water bottle. Yes. Yeah, the only one. Now, I think you can still buy some. No, I think you? they are still available, but in limited quantities. Yeah, but, but that one is definitely unique. So, uh, you might win that one. Uh, anyway, the winner of that bottle is Zane Adamo with this cracking photo uh, taken he said, while I was helping Sag Rafa LA's yearly nocturne ride, two cyclists climbing up to the famous summit of Mount Wilson. Check it out. It doesn't look hugely nocturnal, but I love it nonetheless. It, yeah, I would agree. It's a cracking photo. Yeah. Uh, however much light there is left. Yeah. In second place, winning a G-Sin Stripes t-shirt uh, and G-Sin Stripes socks, both with a French flavour, is Joss Reed making the most of summer and going out for pre-work rides uh, is perfect. Quiet country lanes. That is cool, isn't it? Although that, that photo, whilst inspiring, does make my legs hurt. 
It does look tough, doesn't it? It doesn't look dissimilar to a lot of the lanes around our offices in Bath. Which is precisely why my legs hurt, just looking at it, because <laughs> they, uh, they're hard. That they? is they're such really a hard. British photo, isn't it? There aren't many uh, roads around the world that narrow where you can barely fit a car on a bike. No, and it's bonkers at the minute. It's... Uh, the uh, summer growth has really, <laughs> as you know from your from your lawns. But uh, anyway, right, enough of that. Ready for the video? Oh yes, first place this week won by a lob with this shaky start for the video. I think you'll agree. But look at that when the panorama is revealed. So this is an evening ride in the Glacier National Park which just looks fantastic, doesn't I can it? And see why it's a national park, to yeah. say that much. Uh, yeah, brilliant video, love to get them in, and you'll win yourself a Mont Ventoux t-shirt, G-Sin stripes hoodie, and G-Sin Elite Fly Yellow Water Bottle. We've well, got I mean, we've run out. <laughs> <laughs> I think there seems to be uh, some stock somewhere, doesn't there? Yeah, I, see, I can see one. I can literally see one over there. <laughs> That's the There's end of that then. Uh, don't forget to get involved, ready for next week's show, by uploading your inspirational photos or videos, which we love, to the GCN app. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're going to start with an update on the news that we reported a few months back, actually, about Trek joining the Responsible Packaging Movement, which aims to reduce the use of plastic packaging and increase the use of sustainable packaging. Well, they have just released the results of their initial efforts, and they're mighty impressive. They are mightily impressive. Apparently, they have saved a total of almost 200,000 kilos or 200 tonnes of plastic since August of last year. Now, most of that came from the packaging of the bikes themselves, but there were also significant savings on the use of plastic hangers and nylon straps, amongst other things. And also, amongst other things, in the next steps, they are aiming to try and eliminate the use of zip ties. Yes! Though. Woohoo! Yes! I knew my campaign would start <laughs> to work. That is so good. That would be a hack from you. Oh, it absolutely it? would, yeah. No, uh, fair play to Trek, though. Yeah, Thumbs up well for that. done. Well done. We're going to move on to a charity ride with a difference now, though, because Andy Cribb is going to attempt to ride more than 5,000 kilometres in July to raise money for a homelessness charity called the Oasis Community Housing. Uh, the reason this fundraising ride is different because Andy was knocked off his bike four years ago and told by doctors that he would never ever be able to ride a bike again. Wow, I cannot imagine just how much your levels of appreciation of riding a bike must go up if you've been told you will never be able to do it again. Um, and it's not that he's doing it the easy way either, if there is an easy way to do 5,000 kilometers. Uh, he's gonna be taking on a number of the steepest roads in Britain, including the fourth Penllech in Wales. It's almost Something as good like as your that. French yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we featured that on the channel a couple of years ago, didn't we? We did. Now, while most eyes are on the road at this time of year, some of the biggest names in gravel travelled to Kenya for the four-day migration stage race. Uh, Lawrence Tendam, Ian Boswell and Betsy Welsh joined 30 East African pro cyclists for the inaugural edition. And I've got to say, it looked incredible. It did. Incredibly hard, too. Some big old stages adding up to 650 kilometres total over the four days, with 8,000 metres of climbing. Ian Boswell apparently had a nightmare on the first day, so lost a load of time he couldn't recover from. But Lawrence Tendam, meanwhile, managed to take the overall victory, pushed hard by Suleiman Kangang. He's one of the founders of the race. The women's race was won by Nancy Akinyi, just ahead of Betsy Welch. And I hope that that race will grow and grow. It certainly looks like it has the potential, and it makes so much sense for gravel racing to broaden its horizons beyond the US, I would say. It does, yeah, absolutely. I would love to race in Kansas, for sure, but how cool would it be to race around Kenya? I mean, that is an adventure and a half, isn't it? Uh, lastly, we've got some news of our own. It's been a difficult time, as you all know, for events over the pandemic for what seems like forever at this point. And that includes our own GCN events, which have been on hold for quite some time. But slowly and cautiously, things are starting to come back. So we're very pleased to announce that bookings for the next GCN Mallorca are now open. Woohoo! We had a great time at the last GCN in Mallorca, didn't we? We did, yes. And the team can't wait to get back to the island. Uh, if you haven't seen any of the previous coverage of GCN Mallorca, what you can expect is four days and nights of great riding and entertainment, including the GCN live show. And of course, the highlight of the whole event, Lloydie's Pub Quiz. <laughs> uh, I mean, I yeah, the highlight of the whole event, I think, was probably the riding. 
wasn't it? But the pub quiz was quite good as well. No, nope. I think we'll pub agree. quiz, um, karaoke, riding third. Okay. Well, anyway, it all culminates with the closed road GCN KOM challenge on the final day, where you can ride for fun or see if you can beat Lordy's time. <laughs> That'll be hard, won't it? Yeah, really hard. Uh, now, we rescheduled our original March dates to the end of the summer. So GCN Mallorca is going to take place from, wait for it, Thursday the 30th of September until Monday the 4th of October. Now, we obviously recognise that there are still risks from the pandemic and uncertainty related to travel. So we're putting in place a number of measures to give you confidence to book, including a full refund guarantee if the event does not go ahead due to COVID. So head over to GCNEvents.co to check out the full booking terms and, of course, to reserve your place. We should take special measures of the karaoke doing those things over the mic. I can just imagine you with a visor as well. <laughs> uh, we can tell you firsthand, though, that it is really worth it. So we do hope we'll be able to meet some of you later on this summer on what is a fantastic island for cycling. What's your karaoke song going to be of choice? Well, I recently did a rendition of Dave, Funky Friday, which went down very well with the small audience. <laughs> I'm not even joking. How many were in the audience? Four. Okay. <laughs> Next up, hack, forward slash bodge of the week, starting with Marky Mooshaft, who sent in this. Recycled bike bits, new little fish made of unwanted bike bits and some soft toy eyes. They are cool. They are cool. Aren't they? I mean, like, genuinely, just very cool. I like them a lot. I'm starting to think that we could upcycle our Campagnolo 11 speed 11 to 23 cassette side. But we know, Dan, that their value is rising by the day, perhaps exponentially. In fact. <laughs> so, uh, so I would, I would, I would hesitate to make fish out of them. At but some point in a few months, Si and I will be on the g show announcing our retirement yeah, through selling said cassettes. Yeah, it's basically, it's a bit like investing in Bitcoin, isn't it? Having, having, <laughs> yeah, those, having the cassettes. Having yeah. old bits of bikes. So um, we just need to sell at the right time before yeah. we take the big dive. Yeah, uh, anyway, anyway, I, gonna, I love that. 100% hack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, unsurprisingly, 95% of people voted that one a hack. Nice. Just watch out, Marky Moo, uh, that you don't cut yourselves on that disc rotor on the... the the fish in the foreground, they're obviously very sharp, aren't they? So, uh, so watch out. Right, moving on. The next one is from Alexander Bro. Look at this! Tiger Unicorn Dragon Bike. Wow, I'm not entirely sure that is a unicorn. I think he's got two horns, but uh, still, I like that very much. Very cool. I mean, I, I don't know if I can say any more than that other than just brilliant. I'm, I mean, I'm not quite so sure if that looks, uh, uh, I mean, I'd rather wear a bum bag than ride that, let's put it that way. No, you see, like, if I was going to have a dedicated ride to the station bike, that's what I'd have. You want to draw that much attention to yourself? <laughs> I mean, yes, when you put it like that, it is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm it, going bodge. It's a bit shouty. <laughs> A bit shouty. Yeah, no, I like that. I think that's cool. It's like it's like riding around with a silent siren. Um, yeah, well, I'm going budge. And I'm going hack. I, I'm actually in the majority. It was just, quite close. Forty-seven percent versus fifty-three percent, but in favour of budge. Uh, next up, James A eighty-five snapped gear cable, no problem. Friend managed to snap the inner gear cable at the hood end in the middle of nowhere. I gave it a quick modification to give him at least one gear by using the old cable. It held up for the remaining hilly ninety-kilometre ride home. And I think this is one of the original roadside hacks from GSN from many moons ago. It is indeed, yeah. And just bear in mind, you've got more than one gear because you've got your barrel adjuster. So actually, you can you can probably get a few different gears out of it. How? Well, because if you you can adjust the cable tension with your barrel adjuster. Yeah. So you can, mean stopping. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, you could potentially reach back, but I wouldn't advocate that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, you just kind of. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. But, yeah. but not gear changing on the fly, a bit like the, the, the early 1900s before Campagnolo invented. Uh, gears. The derailleur, indeed, yeah. No, I, that's a hack from me, 100%. Yep, well, I mean, I'm going to hack. hack for that one, and the results are 85% hack. 15% of people presumably just cross with you for snapping your gear cable, yeah. I guess. Uh, right then, next up, we got this one from Daniel Bledsoe. Uh, a booze cage. Hack, hack. from you, Yeah. Hack. <laughs> uh, add a bottle cage to your bike stand to make maintenance the most relaxing part of your day. I like this. Enjoy bike maintenance. It's not a chore. Something to be savoured with a cold beverage. Yes. Yeah, that's very cool. Great just, idea. 
Just be careful that you don't have too many cold beverages in case your maintenance starts to sort of be counterproductive. Yeah, otherwise your maintenance stand could be deemed a hack, but your actual maintenance could be deemed a bodge. Indeed, uh, 84% yeah. of people went with hack for that one side. Can I, sorry, can I just, I've just looked in the background. It yeah. would appear that Daniel is doing maintenance on a carpet, <laughs> on, like a, on, like, on like a living room type carpet. Which is um, which is brave, yeah, yes. very brave. I hope there's a giant protective sheet underneath you. All right, stand. if you live alone, life-threatening if you don't. <laughs> true that, very true. Right, next up. Uh, yep, this from Chinchliff, Chinchliff, Chinchliff. I'm going with. Yeah, good idea. Um, tin foil top tube repair spotted in central London. Not sure what's going on. Possibly a bad repair to a cut top tube. <laughs> Oh mm. my word! Is that a repair if it involves tin foil and sellotape? <laughs> Good gracious! That me. looks scary. It does. I yeah. Would say. Should um, we just say that's a bodge and move along? I think we probably should do. To the three percent of people who voted hack, take a long, hard look at yourselves in the mirror. Yeah. Maybe this thought was a bit like that Cervello that was it written by Turnison in the Mike Tour Turnison, of France, yeah, with where one, he, uh, he managed to finish without um, one of his seat stays. Yes. Just goes to show how well built those bikes are, to be honest, isn't Indeed. it? Indeed. Do you want to tell your story now? Go on then. Uh, back in 2008, at our initial Cervelo test team get together in Switzerland, not only did I room with the current Tour de France winner, Carlos Sastre, but also in the talk that he gave to the team, Gerard Ruman, co founder of Cervelo, claimed that you could actually ride one of those S3s from back in the day without any chain stays at all. Such was the strength of the carbon bonding around the bottom bracket area. And the amazing chain stays. There we go. What a great story. Mm. I've, I've heard that tried a few it. times. Um, <laughs> but it gets better every time, Dan. Thank you. Uh, right. Yeah, I think so. Uh, anyway, lastly then, we've got Smitten Maxwell, who uh, said, uh, random Washington DC bike. Saw this bike while I was in Washington DC. What do you think of the steering situation? I think it's novel, is what I think. Novel, yes. Um... Aero. <laughs> you could rest your arms on it, I guess, couldn't you? you? Could, I mean, yeah. that'd be interesting to ride, wouldn't it? It would. I mean, you could even, I mean, actually, there's, you've got built-in aero bars. Yeah. You? you could rest your forearms on there, you could, you know, climb out of the seat, you've got like bar ends on there. Oh, I mean, you're trying to justify hack, but I'm still going bodge. I, I don't think it would be particularly pleasant to ride, that one. No. What's weird is that it's not like a bodge in terms of like, oh, I haven't got any handlebars, I'm just going to stick a steering wheel on. That's taken some effort to get the brakes and the gears and stuff on said steering wheel. Like, it's not, it's not an easy fix, that. That's well, it's taken... the same as the unicorn stroke uh, double horn. It's just attention seeking, in my mind. <laughs> uh, don't forget to get involved ready for next week's show by voting on the hacks and bodges that are already on the GCN app. And don't forget you can also submit yours, which we might use in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, before we do leave Hack or Bodge, though, we've got a, a very quick update about uh, Dan's translation of Kere es Poder, which does not mean love is power. Uh, according to Santiago Castro Masafero in the comments, uh, it translates literally as to want is to be able to do it. Therefore, if you can dream it, you can do it. Um, and he said, it just sounds better in Spanish. So there you go. Apparently, Marco also says uh, the closest translation to English would be where there is a will, there is a way. And I think somebody did point that out all those years ago when I made this mistake that no one will ever let go. Love is power. Sounds better if you ask me. And I would love one on my um, head unit mount. Time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. Not a yellow one. Not limited edition. Not limited. Plentiful well, supply of these ones. Well, kind of plentiful. I mean, they're not like common or garden, are they? I mean, it's still... It's, it's like fairly... It's fairly exclusive because it's a GCN bottle. You know, <laughs> you know what we're getting at here. Uh, anyway, gosh, we've been ranting on so long, I've been locked out of my laptop. <laughs> Basically, uh, we'll show you a photo, you write a witty caption, stick it in the comment section down below. We'll pick a winner next week. Gosh. <laughs> there we go. Right. <laughs> did I just say gosh, did I? I think so. Yeah. Uh, last week's photo was this one of Mathieu van der Poel after his stage two victory. And our winner, again, I think, Tim Bishop, rings a bell. Does. Uh, is this. After winning his first Tour de France stage, Mathieu van der Poel was pretty laid back. Ah, oh, there we go. But him 
Yeah, no, it's just um, about the same level as I give each and every week, but that bottle will be winging its way to you just as soon as you supply your address in a Facebook message. Indeed, yeah, to join your collection, Tim. Uh, so there we go. God, imagine that. Imagine being like a serial winner. <laughs> You're just that funny, naturally. Brilliant. Uh, right, this week's image is this one of Theo Gagan Hart rolling off the start line of a stage of the Tour de France. Dan, do you want to get us started? Ineos Grenadiers finally shun rim brakes in favour of prototype carbon disc brake model. Oh, I see what you did there. It does look like they've got disc brakes, doesn't it? it Very does. large heat dissipating ones. Very large, yeah. But uh, there we go, that is cool. Yep, do your best. In the comments below, we'll pick out another winner for the bottle next week. Before we get on to what's coming up on the channel this week, I'm about to read a hundred different opinions on size glasses that he showed us a picture of last week from Specsavers, which he should have gone to. Uh, first up, John L. Son JDN. Those glasses make Si look like an action movie henchman. I Samuel, think that's a good thing. Samuel, put, I'm sorry, Si, I have to side with your wife after seeing those glasses. Derek wrote, Si looks very much like Napoleon Dynamite in those glasses. There were lots of Napoleon Dynamite comments. Yeah. Uh, Philip Miller, Si looks like he's aiming at a new career as a pool boy, cocaine dealer, or 1960s Rolling Stone correspondent in those glasses. Billy Bob, Si looks like an extra from Boogie Nights. Uh, Jeff Williams, Si, get those glasses with heavily tinted lenses, you'll be a shoe in as a used car salesman. Uh, Jal492, Si is the serial killer from the house that Jack built. And Forward Ghoul52, no to the glasses, makes Si look like a sinister geography teacher who drives a van with blacked out windows. Ah, uh, you know, in another life I could have been a geography teacher. But uh, but anyway, yeah. Can we move on to some other comments now? Well, no, because I've got one more, Si, oh, from God. Brooke S. Si can definitely pull off those glasses. I think they rather suit him. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks, Brooke. Have you got any more like that? No, that, I mean, I looked at every comment. That was the only positive one that I found. Oh, OK. Right, well, um, OK, thanks. I'll... Um, I might not get the glasses now. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's move on to uh, Hank's greatest challenge, the Land's End John O'Groats uh, record attempt, which is just inhuman, bonkers. Um, over Tim, over time, in fact, said, uh, when you've got no idea what's going on, carry on. Uh, that was Mark Beaumont's line. Uh, he said it's got to be worth a T-shirt, isn't it? Good idea. It is. It's, it's just a good idea. and a half, isn't it? Uh, everybody is fish said and for the next one can Hank do this on a broken saddle <laughs> but also but let's be serious these Hank and Mark challenges are incredible videos and it's awesome to see what these two athletes are capable of I'd thoroughly agree with that uh, thanks to you Tim for supporting this kind of content go Hank and go Mark amazing effort it really is awe-inspiring it is but it's I mean it is hard work supporting that kind of content Dan isn't it I mean we have to work pretty hard to, yeah. to get them to do to, those kind of challenges. To watch that video. It's really tough. Half so, an yeah. hour of my time up every yeah. so often. So, yeah, so you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, two versus two, tandem versus two roadies. Uh, Tiago Santos said, tandem versus me on a TT bike would be a clash of the year. Yes. And that got a lot of likes too. Yeah. So, uh, I'm game. Well, yeah, phone. John Lee, two tandem, Sinus TT bike and Manon on the recumbent. This would have to be the finale of this series. So. Have I got to beat Manon again? Oh! Clearly, clearly again. I do. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, yeah. Uh, top 10 mistakes when riding on Zwift. Uh, Darren Go said, first mistake uh, to avoid on Zwift, riding with your back to the screen. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, that Manon is, did seem to make that one. That was she? quite a big mistake. Uh, and finally, underneath last week's show, Heop Expert. I agree, we should really give Ollie some slack and drop the jokes. And I couldn't decide whether that was ironic and sarcastic or not. Um, I'll take it with a pinch of salt. Anyway, coming off on the channel this week on Wednesday... Just drop it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what made the UCI ban this new tech? Uh, we're talking about Super Sapiens, the glucose monitoring system, uh, which was recently banned from competition to anybody who is not diabetic. On Thursday, it's the tech show. And on Friday, what is chamois cream? and how to use it. Not yeah, sure how we're that's going a, to show you how to use oh, it. It's a detailed instructional one, that one. Yeah, Is very it? detailed. Um, yeah, uh, on Saturday, which GCM presenter actually rides the most? Mm, there you go, there's a question you want to know the answer to. Uh, we took on a Strava challenge. This is the, the new feature that Strava launched, group challenges, which has been awesome fun. So make sure you check that one out on Saturday. Then on Sunday, how few watts does it actually take when you're fully aeroed up to the max to ride at 30 miles an hour? Ollie shows us. It's 
blooming remarkable. Blimey. It is, yeah. Well, it is amazing how airy you can get these days, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, also, we have got the Tour de France and the Giro Rosa for you live for the next week or two, if it's the Tour de France. There are territory restrictions, so make sure it is available where you are if you're about to try and subscribe. And two more films, both to do with mountains. So coming up on Friday, uh, we did a panel show, didn't we? I was joined by Brian Smith and William Fotheringham and special guests to try and decipher what are the top 10 Grand Tour climbs of all time. Could we do it? You can find out on Friday. Uh, but already out this week is a story of Mont Ventoux. We sent our two French presenters, Loic Chatou and Florian Chabot, out to ride that mythical climb from its three different sides. And they didn't have the best of weather sides, did they? They didn't. It is a brilliant film, that one. So do make sure you check it out. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to finish this week's GCN show with that return of... Extreme Corner. Check out this from Eric Henriksen. Oh my word. I feel sick. Yeah. I feel sick. I mean, I assume he survived, given that he's given us permission to use his film. Well, if that was him replying from his own Instagram account, uh. then he is still around. But my goodness, you do take your life in your hands with something like that, don't you? You do? Yeah. I don't, I don't know why you'd want to do that. But no. um, anyway. If you'd like to watch his full Instagram reel, we'll leave a link to that in the description below this video. But hats off. I mean, it's a different kind of challenge to Hank and Mark Beaumont, isn't it? But nonetheless... Don't, so don't say it to Hank. He will go and do that. <laughs> well, I... I would never send Hank on that sort of mission. No. Blimey. No, the uh, the risks are slightly bigger, aren't they, to that? You know, riding to Lanzan John Grace gets a bit tired, feels a bit sick. You know, like at the end of the day, you just stop. Mm. Hopefully, you probably survive. Whereas that one, no. no mm. that's, uh, yes, not for me. No. Don't mind watching it, but it's not for me. <laughs> there we go. Uh, right, thank you very much for watching the GCN show this week. I think that's it, isn't it? <laughs> we'll leave it there. I was going to leave you hanging there. So, no, thanks very much. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it, and we'll see you next week.